Hey everybody, welcome to another game in the 1977 Chicago White Sox Stratomatic Replay. We are now at game number 93 as the Chicago White Sox travel to Fenway to take on the Red Sox. Good pitching matchup for the Red Sox. It'll be Ferguson Jenkins. And in 1977, he was 10 and 10 with a 3.68 ERA. We'll be opposed by Francisco Barrios of the White Sox, who was 14 and 7 with a 4.12 ERA. When we last left you, Toronto pulled an upset over the Red Sox. I mean, over the White Sox rather. Uh, 7 to 3, as Jerry Garvin got the win. And then there were two more game, or excuse me, one more game with the Blue Jays that uh, Chicago was able to get the win behind Ken Kravick, who's been like their stopper. He's now seven and one on the season, and Sox won it seven to one over the Blue Jays. Ken Kravick gave up a run in the first, and then gave up nothing after that. Pitched the whole complete game, helped save some of their bullpen, uh, and the Sox got. An unexpected home run from Jack Brohammer, his first of the year. In fact, he was a triple away from the cycle. He homered, doubled, and singled. So he was a big offensive star, and of course, Ken Kravick, the pitching star. That was game 92, which was played against Toronto. Now they leave north of the border, come back to the States to face the Boston Red Sox, game number 93. Let's look at the starting lineups first for the White Sox. It'll be Gar, Bannister, Orta, Zisk, Gamble, Spencer, Lemon, Soderholm, and Essien. So that's kind of like their standard lineup. For the Red Sox, it'll be Burleson, Lynn, Rice, Yastrzemski, Fisk, Scott, Hobson, Doyle, and Miller. So for some reason, I don't know if Dwight Evans is hurt or they just decide to give him the day off or whatever, but Rick Miller patrols right field for the Red Sox. I kind of put my dice tray away and decided to... Try to roll everything on the score sheet. Hopefully, that way you can see the score sheet as we play. And then sometimes that's off camera and I can't fit everything in. So we're going to try a different approach. Uh, do have this little backstop here. So hopefully that will keep me from rolling the dice off the table. That's been one of the problems otherwise as it falls off that table. Because there's a little bit of a gap back there and the way this table is set up. So... Hopefully we can prevent that going forward. Right now, it is Ferguson Jenkins on the mound. And first things up for the White Sox is Ralph Gar. So Ralph Gar stepping to the plate. Trying to get things going for the Sox. See if they can keep the winning ways. Sox are now 51 and 41 after 92 games. So here is Gar. To lead it off. 4-7 against Jenkins, and that is a one for a single. Anything else, he will line it to George Scott. And that's what he did. So Gar hit it hard, but right at Mr. Scott. One away. Here is Alan Bannister, shortstop. 3-8 for Bannister, and that's a, a lot of hits in column three, but 3-8 is a ground ball back to Ferguson Jenkins. So two up, two down. And that'll bring up George Orta, second baseman. 3-6 for Orta. It's going to ground it to second, handled by Denny Doyle. And it's a very easy inning for Ferguson Jenkins. 1-2-3 goes to Chicago. We go to the bottom of the first. Chicago nothing. Boston coming to bat. And Francisco Barrios takes the hill. He'll be starting out facing the rooster, Rick Burleson. Not to be confused with the red rooster. He used to be a WWE performer, Terry Taylor. Here is the pitch. 6-2 is a fly to center, handled by Lemon. And there's one away for Fred Lynn. 5-10 against the lefty for Barrios. 5-10 is a catcher X, catcher Essien. His rating is a 2E4. So with 2E4, two, 2 and an 18, 2 and an 18 on a catcher, 2 and an 18 is a G2. And that error rating there, or the dice total there, is a 14. And he's an E4. 
There is no 14, so it's a good play. Just a little dribbler in front of the plate, which Essien pounces on. Throws to Spencer covering, and there's two up, two down for the very dangerous Jim Rice. Of course, in 78, Jim Rice had that MVP-type season. 39 home runs, 114 RBIs, 320 average. So, very dangerous Jim Rice. He's in scoring position at the plate. 6-8. 6-8 is a pop-out to short. He just missed a chance for a double or triple. Pop-out to short. So, Barrios gets through that. No, no issues either. So, both pitchers. Twirl a 1-2-3 inning after one complete. No score here at Fenway. And it'll be Richie Zisk stepping to the plate for the Sox, for the White Sox. i got to keep in mind both teams are the Sox. 110. 110 is going to foul out to George Scott. And there's one away. Brings up Oscar Gamble, the DH. 3-5 for Scott. He's going to fly to right. That's Rick Miller. He will make the play. So two up, two down for the dangerous Jim Spencer, first baseman. Power hitting first baseman. 1-9. However, he's going to pop it up to George Scott. So they've had a couple of pop-ups. And some ground outs and not a whole lot going on. So Ferguson Jenkins has the Chicago bunch. Southside Hitman stifled a little bit. We go to the bottom of the second. No score. Here's Yaz. 1-4 for Yaz. He's going to ground to order at second. That's an easy play. One up, one down. For Pudge, Carlton Fisk. Fisk. 2-2 two -two for Fisk. Hit by the pitch plus injury. Of course, we're not doing injuries, but he is just going to be plunked. We are doing hit by pitches. We're just not doing injuries. So Fist, no problem with being injured. He shakes it off. He is a C stealer, so they're going to hold him on. It's George Scott. 5-8. Five, 5-8 eight. Five, eight to fly to center, handled by Chet Lemon. Two up, two down. And that'll bring up Butch Hobson, who had 30 home runs in 1978. 30 home runs. Big year for Butch Hobson. 6-12, though, is a fly to left. He didn't get all of it, and Ralph Gar hauls it in. Inning's over, so after two complete, we got zeros on the scoreboard for both teams. We go to the top of the third. It'll be Chet Lemon to lead it off. The Lemon, Soder, Home, and Essien, bottom third of the order. 6-11 is a fly to center, handled by Fred Lynn. One away, so both pitchers on their game early. There's Soderholm. 2-6 for Soderholm. That's some damage. 1-15 is a homer. 16-20 will be a double. But a 1-15 and Soderholm goes deep. And he does. Home run. That's a 9. I don't think it showed up on camera very well, but it was a 9. And that's a home run for Eric Soderholm. Breaks up the no-hitter and the shutout in one full swoop. And the White Sox take a 1-0 lead on the Soderholm homer. And bring up Essien. 2-5 for Essien. That's a solid double right there. 2-5. Solid double. So the bottom part of the so White Sox order. Getting to Ferguson Jenkins. Essien's an East dealer. He will not be held. Ralph Gar the batter. 2-5 for Gar. Single two stars, and that will score Essien. So all of a sudden, Chicago is figuring out Ferguson Jenkins. It is now 2 nothing Chicago. It took the home run from Soderholm to break the ice, but they've done it. Gar is a C stealer. He will be held. And here's Bannister. 5-10. It's a fly to left. Handled out there by Mr. Rice, and it's two away. Gar still at first. George Orta. 6-6 six, six against a lefty. That's a 1-13 to 13 double, 14-20 to 20 is a single, two stars both ways, so the run cannot score. But it's a 13, so that's just that's the, low, that's the low end of the double, or the high end of the double, however you want to look at it. So George Order with a double. Unfortunately for the, so for the White Sox, it's a two stars, so Gar cannot attempt to score. He has to stop at third. So second and third, two outs for Richie Zisk. 111. It's a ground ball to third. Hobson's got it. And Jenkins limits the damage to two runs. Could have been a, could have been worse if this had gotten a hit there. 
could have blown it open, but as it is, it's 2 nothing. so Boston Bats certainly are capable of putting that on the board. Here's Denny Doyle, leadoff man, or leadoff man of the inning. Doyle, Miller, and Burleson. The little guys are coming up for the, for the Red Sox. 4-2, lefty. Fly ball to right. Would be a ballpark home run if we were playing the Super Advanced, but we're not. Plus, Doyle has weak power anyway, so it wouldn't have been a home run either way. Here's Rick Miller. 4-5. Struck him out. So, Barrios getting some extra energy from that run support. Puts the first two down, and here's Rick Burleson. 4-3 off of Barrios. Ground ball pitcher X. He is a 3-E-12. So, a 3-E-12 for Barrios. That is a six. So we'll check a pitcher. Pitcher with a three. Oops. Pitcher with a three and a six is a G3, so he will get to it. However, we've got a 17 here. That could be trouble. 17 and an E12 for a pitcher. And hey, he got, he got lucky. 12, 15, and 18 would have been errors. 17, he makes the play. So good play for Barrios to get Burleson. And Boston's gone here in the third. After three completed, it's 2 nothing Chicago. And Fergie back on the bump, facing Oscar Gamble. Start the fourth. 6-10 against the lefty. The ground ball third base X, that's Hobson. We'll check Hobson's defensive prowess. He's a 3-E-23. Three and a one, that's going to be a base hit for sure. Three and a one is a single two stars and a 15 on an E23. And it's a two base error. How about that? So an E23 third baseman, a 15 is a two base error. So we have a single plus a two base error. And Oscar Gamble is going to make it all the way to third. So he gets there on the single and then gets to third base on the E5. So how about that? An error on Hobson. And Chicago is a runner at third. Nobody out to start the fourth. Boston, with one out, with nobody out, they'll play the infield back. If they get an out, then they'll bring the infield in. Here's Spencer, 1-7. Doesn't matter. It's a single. Solid single, two stars. And Chicago cashes in that mistake by Hobson. With an RBI single by Spencer, it's 3-0 Chicago. Spencer's an E-stealer. He will not be held. Here's Chet Lemon. 6-6. That's a single two stars, so they're getting to Jenkins here. Single two stars will put runners at the corners with nobody out. May have to get that Boston bullpen going early. Here's Soderholm. 2-5 for Soderholm, and that's a single to right field. So that'll score at least one. Well, it'll score one. The question is whether Lemon can go to third or not. Spencer will score from third, obviously. Lemon, who was being held because he's a C stealer, he starts out with the 14 being held, makes him a 13. And the arm in right field is Rick Miller. And Rick Miller's arm is a minus two. So they're going to hold Lemon at second base with nobody out. I don't want to start making outs on the base paths. So, two are on, nobody out, two are in, and Jim Essien, catcher, steps to the plate. Boston's bullpen is loosening. They got activity out there. The spaceman Bill Lee loosening up for long relief. 5 9 for Jenkins against the righty. Struck him out. So, big strikeout for Fergie. And that's out number one. And that brings up Ralph Gar. 1-6 for Gar. Ground ball second base A. That's a double play. Uh, let's see. Was the runner being held? Lemon was being held, but he's being held by the shortstop. When the lefty's up, shortstop has the whole responsibility. So in this case, the second baseman did not have to give up his range. So it will be a legitimate 4-6-3 double play. So Ferguson Jenkins caught a break there. Had that been a ground ball... Shortstop A, that would have been a base hit. 
because the shortstop would be responsible for holding the runner. But it was not. It was the second. So they get out of it on the double play, 4-6-3. Two runs come in. It's 4 nothing Chicago. So Ferguson Jenkins, maybe on his last leg here, lets his team can get some runs. Here's Fred Lynn. one eleven for Lynn. He's going to ground it to first. Spencer to the bag himself. One away. Brings up Jim Rice. Popped to short his first trip, 1-8. He's going to ground to third. Soderholm is there. Two up, two down. And Barrios just on a, just strolling along here. Here's Yaz. 4-10 for Yaz. That's a fly to center. He just missed a single. And there is no ballpark effect, so it is a fly to center. Three up, three down again. So nothing doing for Boston. We go to the fifth. It is 4 nothing Chicago. We'll give Jenkins one more chance to try to get another inning in. Here's Bannister. 6-5. It's a ground ball shortstop X. That's Burleson. And defensively, Burleson checks in at a 2-E25. So 2-E25 for Burleson. Good range. A little bit high on the air total. 2-5. and 2-5. He gets to that. E25 and a 15. E25. There is no 15. There's a 13, 17, and 18, but no 15. So Burleson gets the tough hop, makes the play. One shortstop retires the other. And George Orta stepping to the plate. Doubled his last time up. 5 6 against the lefty. He's going to do more than that. Possibly. It's a 1 4 triple, 6 5 to 20 double. So he's at least got a double, but a 1 to 4 would be a triple. It's 10. So it's another double for Orta. The doubles machine as Orta gets another double. On the season, he had 27 doubles. So he's at second base. He is a D stealer. He will not be held. And Zisk is the batter. 2-6 for Zisk. It's a fly ball to right field B question mark. So uh, Orta may have a chance, or he will take a chance to go to third. In that calculation, he's a 17 base runner. The arm of Miller is a minus 2, makes him a 15. Then you add 2, makes him a 17. So 1-17, to 17, he makes it to third. 18, 19, or 20, he has to hold. And he does make it to third on the play. So order tags at second, moves to third. He's now at third base with two outs for Oscar Gamble, the dangerous Oscar Gamble. 6-7. Ground ball second base X, that's Denny Doyle. And Doyle, his defensive prowess, is a 2-E-18. 2-E-18. 2 and a 10, he'll get to that. E-18 and an 8. E18, there is no 8. Good play for Denny Doyle. And Jenkins pitches out around that double. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 4 0. Favor of the Pale Hose. South side hitmen trying to get some more wins, try to make up ground the AL West. Here's Carlton Fisk. Hit by pitches first trip up. 1 5. This time he strikes out. So Fisk. With the K, here's George Scott. Two seven for Scott. He will draw a walk. So a walk, one out walk to George Scott. He's an E stealer. He will not be held. And Butch Hobson, the batter. One seven. One seven to fly to center. Handled by Lemon. Two down, and that brings up Denny Doyle, who pretty much all his hits are in column three. Anything else, he will not get a hit. And he found column three. Look at that, three, seven. One to 14 is a single. Five, 15 to 20, he lines to second. It's a 19, though. He's going to line it to order. And that ends the inning. So it's the way the rolls are going for Boston in this game. At the end of five, it is four nothing Chicago. And now this is the point of weakness inning for Ferguson Jenkins. Spencer. Stepping in. 3-5 for Spencer. Struck him out. 
Spencer out on strikes. Brings up Chet Lemon. 4-5. It's a ground ball to short, handled by Burleson. So Jenkins trying to get his first 1-2-3 inning since the second. And Soderholm. 5-4. And he'll do it. Fly ball to left. Handled by Rice. Innings over. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Score has not changed. It's four to nothing. And Ferguson Jenkins still can go some more because he got no knocks against his point of weakness. Barrios, he can go seven before he starts his point of weakness. So he's good to go here in the sixth. Here's Rick Miller. Five eight. Five eight. Ground ball to second. Five nine would be a home run chance. Ground five eight's a ground ball to second. So Miller just missed the number he needed. He will ground to order, one away. Back to the top of the order for Rick Burleson. 6-9, Rick Burleson. Oh, there's the first hit of the game. We had the no-hitter going. Didn't want to say anything, but this is it. 6-9. 1 to 9 is a triple. 10 to 20 is a double. And before that at bat, Barrios had out-hit the Red Sox because he hit a batter. So I gave him one hit, and the rest of the team had no hits. But this one. 1 to 9 is a triple, 10 to 20 is a double. And that is a triple for Rick Burleson. So the no hitter broken up in a mighty way there with a triple for Burleson, who had seven triples on the season. Fred Lynn, the batter, with a 4 0 lead, they're going to play the infield back. Try to prevent a big inning. 6 4. 6 4 is a ground ball third base X. And that's Soderholm. Soderholm defensively. Is a 2-E-11. A pretty good defender. 2 and a 14. 2 and a 14 is a G-1. And that's a 3. So an E-11. There is no 3. So it's a good play. Now let's look at the advanced ground ball chart. The infield was back, remember. Runner on third. Ground ball A, which is the G-1 is a 1. And 1 says batter holds. So how about that? Batter holds because we got that high number on the D20. That kept the run from going in because it kept it at G1. And so the runner had to hold. So Lynn tried to go the opposite way, but Soderholm fielded it and froze Burleson right in his tracks. And he's going to have to hold there with two outs now for Jim Rice. 6-7. Ground ball second base sex, that's Orta. We know he's a 4E23. We also know 11 is the number he wants to avoid on the D20. I'm sorry, on the uh, 3D6, 11 he wants to avoid. He did avoid, he got an 8. But a 4 and a 7, is that good enough? 4 and a 7 is a G3, barely. 4 and a 6 would have been a hit. 4 and a 7, he'll make the play. And the shutout stays intact. So this time, the way that... The rolls weren't going very well for Chicago against Toronto, but the dice have seemed to cooperate a little bit better in this game against Boston. And the score still remains 4 to nothing. Jenkins is going to stay out there because he didn't give up anything against his point of weakness. Facing Essien, 3-6. That's a ground ball to third, handled by Hobson. One away. Here's Ralph Gar. 2-8 for Gar, and that's a ground ball back to the pitcher, Jenkins. One away, or two away, rather, and here's Alan Bannister. Two up, two down, here's Bannister. Jenkins has now retired seven in a row. Bannister, 4-11. Fly ball left field X, that's Jim Rice. Let's check Rice defensively. He's a 3-E-15, so high on the error total, decent on the range. 3-E-15. 3 to 20, we know we'll get to it. It's the E15 you got to worry about, and that's a 9. So an E15, and miraculously there is no 9, so Jim Rice makes the play. And that's going to end the inning. So Jenkins hanging in there. Not getting any run support from his from the Boston group, who usually pounds the ball, but Barrios has kind of stifled him. This will be Barrios' point of weakness inning to start. And he's going to do it with Yaz. 2-11 for Yaz. 
would be a ballpark home run chance, but in this game with the, just the advance, it is a simple fly to left. Yaz is gone. Here's Fisk. Pudge. 5-3 for Pudge. Fly ball left field X. That is Gar. And Gar, defensively, a 4-E4. Four, e4. So not much range, but he won't make many errors. But can he get to it? 4 and a 13. I think he will get to that. 4 and a 13. 4 and a 13. Yes, he does. That is a F1, actually. And the air at the 5. It's a rare play. So let's look at the rare play on an F1. The outfitter races back to the wall and makes a diving catch, but ends up colliding with the wall. He holds on to the ball, but is dazed. All base runners tag up to advance two bases before the infield. Well, there's nobody on base to tag up, so Orta slammed into the green monster, but made the catch, held on, and since nobody was on base, they couldn't tag up and do anything. But Orta hung with it, made the catch, and here's George Scott now, two up, two down on flies to left. 5-7. Struck him out. There's a dot there, but he's not tired yet. And the inning is over. So seven innings in the books. It is still the same score we had after four, which is 4 nothing Chicago. And Jenkins now. Let's see. We've got a couple. we got some lefties coming up, so they're going to go ahead and go to the bullpen. Jenkins, they're going to call it a night for Jenkins. He's going to go seven innings. And he will face 29 batters check his hits. The, the error on the, when Gamble singled and went to third on two base error, that run turns out to be earned because of all these hits. So all four runs are going to be earned off of Jenkins. And let's check walks and strikeouts and hits. For the hits, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine hits. I don't have him walking anybody. And his strikeouts, not very many either. One, two. I got him for two strikeouts. No walks and two strikeouts. So that's the final line on Ferguson Jenkins. And we will go to the bullpen. And with the lefties coming up, we are looking at Bill Lee, who had been soft tossing for a while. He's a starter and a reliever. But in this part of the season, he was doing some relief work. So he will be in there to face the left-hander Orta. Then Zisk, and then two more left-handers, Gamble and Spencer. So Lee, one four to Orta, and that's a pop out to second. One away is Denny Doyle puts that away. Here's Richie Zisk. 5-4 against Bill Lee. That's a fly ball center field X. That's Fred Lynn out there. Let's check Lynn defensively. He's a 1-E3, so no need to roll the 20. You know he's going to get to it. It's just the E3 part you got to worry about. That is a, an 11, so probably it will be okay. E3 and an 11. Let's see, to have an E3, you need a 3, 18, or 16 to have an error. So 11 won't be any issues. It's a good play for Freddie Lynn. Two up, two down for Oscar Gamble. And actually, let's see, with Gamble, they're going to pull Gamble back and substitute with Lamar Johnson. Lamar Johnson, it's kind of their platoon they had at DH. So Lamar Johnson will pinch hit for Gamble and stay in the game to be the DH against Bill Lee. 1-7, and that's a two-out walk issue to Lamar Johnson. And on a 1-7, just out of curiosity, Gamble would have flown to center. So Johnson was in there, got the walk. He's an East Steeler. He will not be held. Here's Spencer. 4-9 against the lefty. It's a fly ball to right, so handled by Miller. And the inning's over. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still a 4-0 ball game. And Barrio is still in there. He's not giving up anything against this point of weakness yet. So he's bucking for a complete game the way Kravik did. That will really give their bullpen a, a nice breather. They can get away with two complete games in a row. 
is Butch Hobson. Oh, I got turned around a little bit. Let's tighten that up. All right, here's Hobson, four, seven, and that's a walk. So that's the first mark against this point of weakness. I don't like those leadoff walks. Hobson's a D stealer. He will not be held. And here's Denny Doyle. Six, seven. Ground ball, second base X. Again, that's order. He's a four E23. But try and avoid an 11 on the three E6s. Barely, it's a 10. Four and a 15. Four and a 15 is a G2, which is a fielder's choice. So it's a four, six fielder's choice. That's a 10. If that had been 11, it would have been an error, but as I said earlier, dice have been kind to Chicago tonight, unlike against Toronto. So here's Rick Miller with one out and one on. 6-8, and that's a fly to center. Again, 6-9 would have been a big hit. 6-8 is a fly to, fly to right, actually, to Zisk. I saw that C there and thought, for some reason, I thought center. But, uh, oops, wrong card to move there, wasn't it? So now to bring up Rick Burleson, top of the order against Barrios. Two outs, one on. Doyle, as a runner, is a D stealer, so he's not even going to be held. Four six against Barrios, struck him out. So Barrios in command, gave that triple to Burleson last time up. The only hit he's given up through eight innings. He's got a one hit shutout going through eight innings. We go to the ninth, it is still four nothing. And Bill Lee back out there. Try to finish things up for his team. Here's Chet Lemon. 4-3 against Bill Lee. That's a fly ball right field X. That's Rick Miller. And defensively, Rick Miller, again, is a 1-E3. So we don't need the D20. We're just checking for the 3. That's an 11. 3 and uh, I think 11 was good on that. Yeah, you had to have a 15 or an 18 or a 3 to make an error. So, easy play there for Rick Miller. Lemon is retired. Brings up Soderholm. Got everything started for Chicago with a home run back in the third. 5-5, five, five, and that's a ground ball shortstop X. That's Burleson. So, we check Burleson's defensive prowess, and he's a 2-E25. So, a 2-E25 for Rick Burleson. 217, he'll get to that, but that's a 16. So the E25 and a 16, there is, there's a 17 and 18, but no 16. So he got a break there. Burleson makes the play, had a wild throw to first, but uh, Scott was able to bring it in. So two down for Jim Essien. 1-7 against the lefty is a walk. So Jim Essien. Two out walk, he's an E stealer, he will not be held. Here's Ralph Gar. 3 9 for Gar. All these hits in column 3 and 3 9, he found a fly to right. So Gar retired to fly out to Miller. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for Boston. They trail it 4 to nothing. And Francisco Barrios trying for a complete game. He's going to do it through the heart of the order. Lynn, Rice, and Yaz, so no easy outs there, although he has their combined 0 for 9 so far. 4-6, fly ball to center, so good play for Barrios, good start. He's two outs away from a one-hit shutout. I've never had a no-hitter in Strat, and I think this might be my first one-hitter if it stands. 6-7. Ground ball, second base X. Again, that is Orta. He's a 4-E23. 4 and a 7. That might get through for a hit. 4 and a 7. Let's check it out here. 4 and a 7. A 4 and a 7 is a G3. 4 and a 6 would have been a hit. 4 and a 7 is a G3. That's a 5. So it's a rare play on a G3. So we go to G3. Rare play. Batter lines a shot that hits the mound and deflects the fielder and makes the play to first for the out. And blah blah blah. So just a regular out. Four to three. So last chance is Jazz. He made the last out in the 75 World Series. He got a chance to make a last out right here in 77. 
six nine, but he won't do it. It's another hit. So Barry, I won't get that one hitter. It'll be a two hitter at least, because again, that six nine is going to get him. One to sixteen is a double. Seventeen to twenty is a single, and it's a double. So he has yet to give up a single. He's given up a triple and a double for the two hits. Yaz is a B stealer, but up four nothing, they're not going to hold him on because his run doesn't mean anything. Here's Fisk. Two two. And he's hit by the pitch, plus injury, but he's not injured. So Fisk, for the second time, gets hit. Barrios has hit him twice. Fisk is not going to be happy about that. And now, Laren Legro is loosening in the White Sox bullpen because Barrios may be faltering here at the end, right at the finish line. Here's George Scott. 5-7, struck him out. There's a dot, but he's not tired. He's only given up two things against this point of weakness, so it doesn't make him tired. So he hangs in there and strikes out George Scott to end the ball game. And what a game it was for Francisco Barrios. Definitely the MVP of the game with a complete game shutout, four to nothing. That is two shutouts in a row by Sox pitching. And who would have thought that? Kravik shut out, or not shut out, but he had a complete game, I should say against Toronto, 7-1, to one. and the one run he gave was in the first inning, so that's eight innings there, not, so 17 shutout innings in a row by Sox pitching. That is something else, the way they had been pitching. All right, let's do the totals. We know that Barrios gets the win with nine innings, complete game shutout, 27 faced 33 batters, finished with a two-hitter, Actually, a four-hitter because he gave up two hits and he hit two batters. So he got as many hits as the Sox did. Two hit batters and two hits off of him. Uh, and he didn't give up a single at all. It was a double and a triple. So he gets the win. Loss goes to Jenkins. I forgot to write Bill Lee in here. I didn't do his totals for the last two innings. First, Jenkins. Let's check his walk. I'm sorry, uh, Barrios. Let's check his walks and strikeouts. He walked two. Didn't get many strikeouts, I don't believe. One, two, three, four. Got him for four strikeouts. All right, Bill Lee, in his two innings, he faced eight batters. He walked two, didn't give up any hits or runs. He walked two, didn't, I don't think he struck out anybody. No, he didn't. No strikeouts there. So nine hits for the Sox. Let's check left on base for Chicago. They left two on here. And uh, one here's three. And one here's four. Five, six. They left on six. For Boston, they left one, two, three, four, five, six. They also left six. All right, so I guess unofficially until I put it in the computer, this is what I have. Chicago wins it by the score of four to nothing. Complete game victory for Francisco Barrios, a two-hitter. Only two hits he allowed. Double to Jazz in the ninth and a triple to Burleson in the sixth. No runs, walked four, struck out two. Did hit two batters. Fergie Jenkins took the loss. Seven innings pitched, four runs, all earned. Including a homer off of the bat of Sodrome. Nine hits, no walks and two strikeouts. Bill Lee pitched the last two innings. Walked two but gave up nothing else. So the Sox get the victory, improved to 52 and 41 after game 93. So game 94 will again be against Boston. They'll be facing Louis Tiant in that ball game. And then after that, I've checked the schedule and see who they're playing because I think the Boston series is just a two game series. But I believe they're coming back home to the friendly confines of Comiskey Park and see if they can do some more damage when they get to play in front of the home folks. That's going to do it from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Stratomatic 1977 Chicago White Sox baseball. As we're doing the Chicago White Sox replay, season replay for 1977 Southside Hitmen. And until next time, as usual, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, how you choose to play it. And I will see you all down the road.